today we are going to be talking about a prediction for grade 10 for their final exam paper two uh many people have been asking me that why don't you do a prediction for this grade as i promise that i'll come back for the full prediction uh, let's start by discussing the different topics which is supposed to be in, and then we see where to focus more and some questions which you can't miss. Some questions which you can't miss, so it means that you are supposed to prepare so that by the time you write your exam, you're able to score high with a distinction. Next year, don't forget that. We'll be having full classes, full time for grade 11 and for grade 10 and for grade 12. So make sure that you subscribe, like, and share so that uh, we build uh, a good community and we change the lives of our fellow people. All right. So let's use very few minutes um, so that this prediction is not that uh, long. And then we can uh, maximize uh, the time we are here. All right. Uh, the first topic we see here, let me go like this. Uh, the first topic you see here, this was paper one. So now we are going to paper two. The first topic you see here is the uh, transport. We have transport, it is 32 marks. Then biosphere is 54 marks. Actually, by doing biosphere only and you maximize all the marks, as I'm going to show you, uh, you are able to get more than 30%. Actually, more than, yes. Yes. So you see that if you do these two, you're above 50%. So it seems that we can kill this paper. Né? Then uh, biodiversity and classification. Uh, by the university and the classification is 21 marks. So it's not uh, also that difficult to get the marks. And then you have the history of life. Here, I'm going to show you the techniques we use when you're answering or when you're asking questions concerning about the history of life. All right, let's start. Let's start um, following this order. Uh, let's first kill the 54 marks so that we see that uh, these marks, we can obtain them. All right. Hmm. So when you talk about the biosphere to ecosystem, what you need to talk about here, you need to know is the three spheres. How do you uh, identify them? Atmosphere, air, lithosphere, land, and then hydrosphere, water. So you need to know because we can bring this in the terminologies. So please make sure that at least you know that. Uh, when it comes to this, so it's the same thing there. Um, lithosphere, not too much there, but when it comes to the biomes, yes, guys, biomes, uh, we like to ask you the biomes in most cases will bring a map, a map which shows the biome. this. Please go when you know this. Please, 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 please. Go when you know this map, this map. Don't make a mistake to go when you don't know uh, these kinds of uh, uh, maps. You see, this is grassland, this is savanna, this is fine boss, so this is thicket, this is uh, succulent karu. Uh, so, guys, please make sure that you go when you know this. All the biomes, né? not too much characteristics, at least you know one, two, but you know where they are located because in most cases, when you ask you questions, we ask you about where are they located. Yes. So please make sure that, you know, yes. Uh -huh. Then uh, when it comes to it's the same thing as to all this is biomes, uh, but the map makes sure that uh, you maximize uh, that. Then when you go to ecosystem, Mm, you need to know the ecosystem, what is a ecosystem, what is a habitat. Uh, at least you must know uh, how to um, define that. Yes. 
because when you talk about um, biotic abiotic factors, this we can bring them in 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 examples and then ask you to identify. When it comes to um, uh, the food chain, yes, that's when we bring in the biotic and abiotic factors. So here it is not that a big deal. It's not that a big deal, but the big deal comes in here. The um, yes, these factors, these factors. Yes, we like to ask physiographic factors, physiographic factors. That is aspect, aspect. Yes, uh, slope and altitude. Yes. So altitude is we are talking about uh, how high an area is. Slope. Uh, when you talk about slope, we are talking about the gradient. Yeah? How yeah? we are talking about the gradient. How is it moving? This is how high uh, from bottom to uh, the top uh, to the top part of the the what? Uh, the, maybe the mountain. And then aspect. You are talking about the direction of the sun. If this is the sun, if this is the sun. Uh, the direction of the sun. So basically, you need to know that. Then when you go to we also like this, because why? Because we have this as chains, full chains and full waves, as full chains, yes. So adaptive factors means soil factors, some of the soil factors. And then when it comes, we'll uh, usually like to ask you the properties of these soils, whereby you talk about the sandy soil, the loam soil, and then the clay soil, whereby these ones have big soil particles, yeah, big air spaces, um, yeah, less humus. This one has the highest amount of humus, uh, moderate um, small particles, moderate uh, air um, air spaces. It's very good for uh, for growing crops. So yeah, uh, then when you talk about clay, you talk about the characteristics. Very um, small, very small particles. It is uh, very uh, common in water log logged areas. So it has a high water retention capacity. So at least you know how to define, uh, to describe those factors. <clears throat> uh, when it comes to wetlands, in most cases, when we bring wetlands, we bring in a passage and then we ask you to read and then we ex extract uh, information from there. Yes, that's basically when you talk about wetlands. Uh, maybe two functions of wetlands, not that a big deal, but yes, please know when you go there, at least you know uh, some two, three, uh, functions and then in most cases questions will come in terms of if it it comes it comes in terms of what in terms of the 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 the, the, the extract you extract it from there yes then when you come to don't forget that this is 54 marks né? yes and then whatever you're talking about i think you know yes eh, these consumers the composers where do how do we set this yes when it comes to this uh, we are looking at a situation whereby you, you, you need to do some calculations. Yes, some calculations. Uh, decomposers, food chains. Né? When we talk about um, food chains, food web. Yeah, basically this. Huh. Yes. Uh -huh. You need to know, okay, we can ask you the direction of the arrow. What does it indicate? It shows the flow of energy. The flow of uh, energy from what is being eaten to what is eating. Yes. And then, uh, so this is it. Why is this one having more energy than this? Because some energy is lost as urine, some parts are not being, uh, are not being uh, eaten. So those are some of the answers you're supposed to talk about. But now you need to know how to draw the, the, the pyramid. The pyramid. Yes. For example, uh, we bring um, a table here and then we say that uh you have x here you have maybe okay maybe i'll say that uh i'll say that um, insects uh we can talk about tree mm -mm. no let me just uh, give you a nice example uh, let me say uh tree yes insect and then i can say uh humans beds whatever it's a bird there so how many trees, maybe one tree, and then how many insects can be on one tree? It can be maybe 200 insects. How many birds can feed on maybe three birds? 
Yes. So now, when they ask you to draw the pyramid of a number, always pyramid of uh, num sorry pyramid of number can be inverted or normal. So in this case, one tree, yes, can be one or it can be a very small because I have one. The tree. This is a tree. And then I say insects are very many. It's two hundred. And then the birds are three. So it can be as small as this. Can be a little bit bigger to that. You see. I formed a pyramid, ne? you see, put it a caption there, something like that. But if this pyramid of energy, energy comes from the tree, goes to the insect, goes to the birds. So automatically energy will have high amount of energy here on the tree. And then some energy is lost because you don't eat everything in, on the tree. Yes. And then you have small, uh, which goes to the what? The birds. So pyramid of energy is always in this format. It must show that format. But this one, it can have small big small or can have big big small and big something like that so it sometimes can be like this sometimes it can be like that that's pyramid of what numbers so pyramid of numbers but if they ask you to draw the pyramid of energy it must have the big base followed by a smaller base then the smallest something like that yes so please don't go to the exam without knowing that why is some energy being lost? We explain that. What the direction of the arrow? We explain that. What's the difference between a food chain and a food web? Food chain it shows you just unidirection flow of energy, while the food web shows you the multiple direction of energy. What is eating and what's being eaten? So they interact. The way you hear the word, the web. Yes. So basically, uh, that's it. So please make sure that you go when you know this kind of the food chain, food web, and then the pyramids. Please make sure you know that. Then let's go to the cycles. Cycles, when you talk about cycles, mm, we like we are like two cycles. Mm, I'm not saying that others will, will not come, but I'm saying that we like. The first one is carbon cycle. You know why do we like carbon cycle? It's because the carbon cycle, these are experience, we, these are the things which are destroying our nature. And then we need to teach you, you need to know that if I do this, I'm destroying the nature. So we bring it so that at least it sticks in your head. So we like to bring this carbon cycle. Then the second one is the nitrogen cycle. Uh, reason behind why do we like nitrogen cycle, I don't know that much. But I know that we like we like the, what? the, the nitrogen cycle. So, so don't make a mistake to go to the paper without knowing the nitrogen cycle and then the carbon cycle. I'm not saying that don't, don't read other cycles, read them, but we like this because uh, we know. I think we, the reason why we bring the nitrogen cycle is because students don't like it. Yeah, and you know that the moment you don't like something, us, we will bring it. So make sure that you do the nitrogen cycle and the carbon cycle. Yes, at least if not both, then at least one will come up. So basically, that is um, supposed to be knowing knowing in paper. So paper two, that is biosphere. So yeah, I'll do a small recap when it comes to that. Uh, I think you must send me the papers you have written. I think I should drop the email so that well, I can go through them. I can go through them. I can go through them. I write for you a memorandum, and then we discuss about it. Né? Yes, before you at least, yes. OK, anyway. Mm, we'll talk about it, that uh, later. Okay, let's go to the classification. Classification here, uh, classification, classification goes here, uh, biodiversity and the classification microorganism here. So what do we expect to find in the classification? Uh, classification is not that uh, a big deal, but uh, students tend to uh, to lose it, to lose it. I don't know why, but students tend to what? To lose uh, questions concerning about uh, classification. All right, let's discuss about it. When you talk about classification, um, there are some things which you need to know. You need to know about the five kingdoms. At least you go when you know about these five kingdoms, yes. Uh, how do we do the naming? How do we do the naming? Uh, starting with the, the genus and then the scientific name. Yeah, who discovered that naming, the naming style, the style, yes, of the binomial? Yes, who discovered it? At least you, you need to know that. 
um yes uh, here again uh, also we bring this one in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of terminologies eukaryotics eukaryotics which uka, u, u, which means true nucleus pro means before the true nucleus meaning that here we have the true cells true true cells when you talk about true cells we are talking about uh, your cells animal cells yes Mm. Then prokaryotes, you are talking about the bacteria. They don't have a nucleus surrounded by the membrane. Then at least you need to know those things, aut uh, autotrophs, uh, manufacturing food, organisms that can manufacture food. Uh, just these few terminologies, at least we're going to bring one or two. Yes. So at least you know that. Uh, why do we use scientific name? Why do we use scientific name? Also, please take note of that. Why do we use scientific name? We use scientific names to prevent confusion. Yes. Mm. We use scientific name to avoid what? Confusion uh, with the common names. Yes. Sometimes we say, why do we use Latin names? Yes, it's the same thing uh, as why do we use scientific names? Then uh, another thing you need to know about is, um, before we go to the history of life, is the species, yeah, the, 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 the species, the endangered species. Uh, please, at least you know, you must know that before you go to the paper. The endangered species, species like um, when I talk about endangered species, I'm talking about the IUCN, which means that the International Union for Conservation of nature, International Union for Conservation of Nature, this desire comes to save those species which are going to be extinct. Yes, we call them endangered species, species which are um, uh, getting uh, like rhinos. Uh, you talk about the maybe the lions, there are specific lions, maybe a white lion uh, is good, getting extinct and the people are killing them. So it is this conservation um, group which brings about protection of this. So the International Union for Conservation and Conservation of Nature will help us to save this. And also there are some species which cannot be found anywhere, the endangered species. Yes, sorry, did I say endangered species? No, not endangered. Endemic species. In species which are endemic in one area. You cannot find them anywhere else. For example, it's good that you are here in South Africa, whereby you see these protea uh, plants. They are found only in South Africa. You cannot find them anywhere else. Therefore, they are endemic in South Africa. You see? So it means that... Um, uh, you, you you must di differentiate between indigenous and endemic because when you talk about indigenous, you're talking about species which are originating somewhere and then can be taken somewhere else. So endemic, they're always they are found in there. You cannot find them somewhere else. So it means that if a catastrophe comes in and then kills them, then automatically those species will be wiped wiped out of the of the what uh, from the earth. Yes. So. Please know at least some of those things. Yes. Uh -huh. I think uh, taxonomy is the uh, classification. Yeah, basically, the, that is it. And then when we come to uh, classification, biodiversity and classification, yes, I think we have done here that. Then we go to the history of life. 43, 43 marks. Where are these marks coming from, from this simple small thing? 43 marks from this simple, 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 small thing. Where are we going to get this, these marks from? Okay, let me show you. You see, it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen slides. It's just 13 slides. Basically, those are two, three pages. Yes. So it means that you can get it, you can master it, and you can get all the 42, 43 marks. So let's start it. Mm -hmm. First of all, you need to know um, uh, the geological time scale. When it comes to when it comes to this, uh, you you're not supposed to cram, 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 cram. No, we don't cram the geological time scale. What do we do when it comes to the geological time scale? The geological time scale, what we do is simple. First of all, you need to know how to 
apply. You need to know how to apply. By the way, what is geological time scale? What is it used for? Basically, it's used to tell us what happens, the events, what happened uh, during those days. You understand? So that we know how we evolve and we don't repeat the same mistakes those organisms did. Yes, basically, that's the importance of the geological time scale. Then we have these eras, eons, and then periods. That is, we don't need to memorize. We just bring questions and then we ask you what happened in the Parazoic era. Uh -huh. you, you, you talk about, you look at it, uh, and then you tell us what happened in the Parazoic era. What happened? Parazoic era. So basically, that's what you need to know how to apply the geological time scale. Then number two, you, you need to know um, about the mass extinction. When it comes to this, you need to know about what you call mass extinction. This extinction. Extinctions, you need to know them, guys, or the five extinctions or the five uh, mass extinctions. Are they five? Yes, there are five mass extinctions. So you please know what happened in each mass extinction. I'm not going to explain that much uh, when it comes to uh, mass extinction. When it, uh, then another thing which you need to know here is the... Uh, uh, the Bing Bang theory. Let me just say uh, the Bing Bang theory. Uh, how the continental drift, how did these uh, continents uh, got split? And then remember when they split, the, you will be forming different species. You understand? Yes. So know how did it form? Uh, when I talk about maybe you started with the Pangaea uh, divided into Eurasia and Grenland, and then basically, when they give you those uh, continents, uh, those different continents, uh, the different continents, and they ask you, how did they split? Definitely, that's continental drift. Né? Yes. And then now, they can ask you what happened in 150 million years ago. Then you can compare it with the geological time scale and then find out what happened really. You understand? And then, how do, how do, how, how do, this continental drift brings about the new species or this organism to divert. If what shows that this thing was one, when you bring, try to bring them together, they form one big mass. It shows that it was one big mass. Number two, the species around here, they might be similar to the species around here. If this is Africa, for example, if this is Africa and this is Asia, the species around here, eh, they are resembling the species which is around here, which shows that this was here you understand something like that and the species which are around here resembles the species which is around here the species which is around here they resemble the species you see so basically uh that's how uh, you can identify so um not that a big deal but at least you know when you know uh at least the continent drift why am i stopped man? and i talk the truth man. you know some of you don't want to hear the truth the content is small here i'm talking about here for these four three or four what I'm talking about here, definitely it will come. Yes. Whether I've seen the paper or I've not seen the paper, I know it will come. You understand? Yeah. So you can check different papers from different provinces. I know it will come. You, you'll find it there. So basically, guys, don't make a mistake. Mm. If it doesn't come, sorry. Ne? Yeah, maybe the teacher didn't want it to come. Uh, but because we have small space, we are uh, small thing or content in this case, for those marks, then definitely we have to examine that. <laughs> number three, or oh, number three, uh, about this, uh, the, the third thing maybe where the marks can come from in this case is the, uh, the what? Formation, formation of fossils. Yes, this. Steps which are involved in the formation of fossils. So guys, uh, please know this phase, this phase, this phase. Yeah. The phases which are involved in the formation of what? Of fossils. Yes. So please don't make a mistake. Uh, at least they have to die and decay, deposition, uh, permeabilization. Uh, so, oh, we like also to bring this as a terminology. We like it. We like it. Yes. This and this. We like it. Please make sure that you know. Yes. You know uh, what it means. Then erosion happens and then you are able to form the what? The fossil. So uh, please don't make a mistake to go when you don't know at least 
yes, we usually ask you one or two. Uh, what are the 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 methods we for, 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 for estimating the age of the organism? We can use the relative dating or we can use the radiometric dating. When you talk about relative dating, we can talk is 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 we we, we can talk in, in forms of layers. Obviously, if you have the different strata. Uh, one, two, three, four, and this is the top. Obviously, you cannot find an um, a recent organism in strata one, and then you find a, a, an old in strata uh, four. Never. Unless you, you did drill and then you put it there. And then definitely fossils, you don't have to put them there. They do them. The process is taking place naturally. You understand? Yes. So basically, you'll find out uh, the oldest in the lower layer and then the youngest in the upper. So you, you are trying to, and then you know that the rock which is found here, how many million years ago did it exist? So if it is around 300 million years, then definitely this organism existed in 300 million years, something like that. Yes, that you are relatively dating. You are relatively dating the date. When did it exist? You understand? You are relatively dating what about radiometric radiometric radio we are using radioactive substances to date here we use half-life i'm not teaching now but we use half-life i'm not going to explain it in too much here but here we use radioactive substances which undergo decay and then we see how much is remaining after a specific period of time and then we say that if i started with the 20 or 10 now i have i have five then this is half of ten then i'll know that this substance decay uh to half maybe after 200 years so i will know how much is remaining or how much um it 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 it, it existed or when did it die so basically that's how the 43 marks are going to come from there's nothing big here guys concentrate you can score a distinction don't forget to if you didn't have a chance to use the distinction material, grade 12 distinction material is there. Grade 11 distinction material is there. Grade 10 distinction material is there. If you have not got one for your next year, make sure that you get one for next year. You understand? And then when you become a subscriber, yes, I'm talking about that subscriber. Yes. Uh-huh. You, you even receive help. Né? You receive help. Next year, God willing, we'll be helping you 24-7. Ne? Yes. Thank you very much. So let's go to the next question. The next question, uh, which is the next, next topic, which is we are done with that, we are done with that, we are done with that. Let's go to transport system. This one is also easy. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Very easy. Easy. Like eating, eating ice cream. Do you have bones? No. It's nice when it's going down. Sorry, I was eating ice cream. All right. Uh -huh. Let's go to the last part, last part, last part, last part, last part, last part. Imagine from the beginning to the end. <laughs> uh, okay, transport system. Here, what do you need to, do, to talk about when you talk about the transport system? Here, we're talking about the heart. Né? Yeah, and then when you talk about the heart, what do you need to look at? Mm. What do you need to look at? Uh... Mm, what do you need to look at here? Well, you, you, there are some things which you, you, you can't miss. You think they can set a paper without bringing the heart, the structure of the heart? Guys, make sure that you know this. Né? Yeah, make sure you know this. Yes, at least it, it brings. This is double saturation. Blood flows to the heart two times before. Uh, it, it, it is supplied to the, the rest of the body. Né? Yes, double saturation. So make sure that at least you know. Uh, yes, blood vessels. Yes, please make sure that you know the, the blood vessels which supplies the heart. Yeah, because this is the heart. And then you have to know the heart itself. Yeah, we don't like that one. We like this one too much. No, no, no. Go when you know that. Uh, when I was teaching this or whenever I'm teaching this, do you think that we, we can skip a question? Why this side, the left, is thicker than the right? Ne? Do you think so? We say that this one is thick. The ventricle here is thick because it, it, it pumps blood to the rest of the body. So it requires a high pressure, you see? While this side is thin, this side is thin because it pumps blood to the lungs. The lungs are just next 
it's just the nose and the mouth, meaning that it's just next close to the heart. You understand? So it requires less pressure. But if you are pumping blood to the rest of the body, then automatically you require high pressure. That's why the side is thicker than this. Uh, uh, when I was teaching, how do you call this line which separates? Ne? We say that that's the septum. So make sure what is the function it's to prevent the blood from mixing the left and the right they don't mix remember this side is deoxygenated blood and then this side is oxygenated blood what if it mixes ne? when it mixes then automatically you're gonna have the problems with the heart or what you call the cardiac the cardiovascular diseases or the cardio diseases meaning that you have maybe this blood is mixing this and then here um you'll be having won't have enough energy yeah your body cannot develop that much Actually, we said that the heart has a small hole. Anyway, that's not what I wanted. So what I wanted is, please don't make a mistake to go to the paper without knowing the structure of the what? Of the heart. Yes. Hmm. Uh, we also, remember when I was teaching, I told you that uh, these questions is coming. Ne? It's not the first time I'm saying it. And it's not the first time, uh, the last time I'm saying it. The, this question is coming. I say that. I say that. The function of the valves. What is the function of the valve? I say that the function of the valves is to prevent the backflow of blood. You understand? Know that this valve is called what? Atrioventricular valve. And then this valve is called what? Is seminona valve. Yes, one is tricuspid, one is bicuspid. So you need to know that. Please know that. So this one prevents blood from flowing backward to the, to the atrium. This one, yes, prevents blood from... Uh, flowing backward to the ventricle. This one prevents blood from flowing back to the ventricle, the right ventricle. This one prevents the blood. You see? So all of them, basically, it prevents the backflow of blood. Please make sure that when you go to the paper, you know it. Mm. I talked about that. Yes. Um, please also make sure that you know how to label this. Yes, because why? Uh, I talked about it when I was teaching uh, nicely if you were in my class you're not in my class, sorry, at least at least you are here now, then make sure that you are in my classes next year. Yes, so that one of the distinctions, one of the distinctions, MCID. Just search there on YouTube, on on, on, on Google, MCID, you will put a title uh, of the topic you want. It will come, it will come, and it will help you out. You have any challenge? Maybe, maybe, let me know. Let me know. Let me know in the comment section. In the comment, I'll be able to help you out, ne? Yeah, no teaching is nice, ne? It's nice as long as what you are teaching, you like it, and the people you are teaching, they like it. All right, let me know if you like what I'm teaching. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cardiac cycle. Ah, uh, yeah. In most cases, how do we set your cardiac cycle? Cycle. In most cases, we bring in uh, these cardiac cycles in terms of the graph, and we ask you to describe. But you need to know them. Yes. Just to, why do you teach them? We teach them so that you know them. Yeah. Uh, remember, this is a basic. This is not. This is just basic. You know? It was under basic. You know? So since it's basic, at least you know how the things operate. At least you hear them so that by the time you start. Yeah. So in most cases, when you bring this, we bring in terms of the. Uh, the graph and ask you the heartbeat how how is the heart being uh uh how do you calculate the, the functioning of the heartbeat the, the heart is through the number of times it, it beats ne? yes anyway uh this is the same thing which we are talking about Blood vessels, yes, at least know the blood vessels, the arteries. We say that arteries are blood vessels which supply blood to the heart. And then veins, they take blood away from the heart. Want, mm -mm, did I say that? No, man. Sorry. Arteries are blood vessels which take blood away from the heart. While veins are blood vessels which supply blood to the heart. And we say that these ones have, uh, all arteries, they carry oxygenated blood except pulmonary artery. And all veins, they carry the oxygenated blood except pulmonary vein. Yes. You know, something like that. At least it will give you a clue and something like that. Blood vessels, these are blood vessels. Hmm? Saturatory system. These are blood vessels. Yes, remember we have three types of blood vessels, three categories of blood vessels. We have the capillaries, the arteries, and then the veins. Yes. So maybe you can talk about the two, three differences between the two, and then that's it. So guys, I know that uh, the papers are going to be very easy. They're going to be very easy. Uh, yeah.
Uh, let me see if I, I there is something I've not talked about. Oh, yeah, maybe. Uh, let me just talk about this. Something, something small uh, about the transition of fossil. You know, as questions which we ask in grade ten and we ask in grade twelve. 12. We tend to bring them. Né? We tend to bring them. We bring them. We bring them. We bring them. We bring them. So, you guys, uh, what is the transition fossil? Is a fossil which has the characteristics of the the present species and the descendant. No, did I say the present? Yeah, the next is the present species and then the descendant. So it, it, it is in between there. When you have the characteristics of your of 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 of, of, of uh, uh, your father, your father, ne? Okay, let me say your mother because it is easy to know your mother. Some of us we maybe we might not know know our fathers, ne? Okay, sorry, it don't. But now your mother, it's very rare not to know your mother unless your mother passed on, ne? Yes, cool. So, uh, your mother is a transitional species. If I, I give an example, has characteristics of uh, your granny and it has characteristics of you. So, your mother has not extinct. Ne? It's still changing from one point to the next point. Ne? So, so, your mother has, if you have characteristics of your ancestor and the characteristics of the next generation, so we shall say that you are a transitional fossil or you are a transitional species so you guys uh please uh, as i'm winding up please don't go to the paper without knowing at least uh these fears uh food chains uh eukaryotic uh karyotic, uh those things uh please make sure what we discussed if you go through and uh, you listen carefully actually some of the things are trying to make sure you remember you will make it, you'll make it. These pyramids, um, what is a species, population, habitat, uh, all those things, uh, the biomes, uh, yes. Uh, lastly, uh, please make sure that, I, I didn't want to repeat this, but let me just repeat it, mm. is the um, experimental questions. Last time they brought a, a line graph, ne? So do you expect to bring a line graph? No, I don't think so. So the options are two, either a bar graph or a pie chart. But let me just put emphasis on a pie chart. Please don't plot using the percentages. No, we don't plot using the percentages. We plot using the degrees. So add if they, 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 they give you 10%, 20%, 30%. You, so since these are percentages, say 10 out of 100 times 360, then you get the degrees. Use the protractor, then put them here. 20 out of 30, out of 100 times 360, then you get the answer there, plot. And then you say maybe 30 out of 100 times 360, see the same thing. Make sure that use a, a, a compass, don't use free hands because we will cross it. Uh, make sure you use a compass and then a, a, a pencil, draw a, a nice cycle, it will have a hole here. Uh, draw a circumference, is it circumference, a radius, and then bring your protractor, put it there, and then start measuring what you have calculated there. Please make sure that you put a caption and then put a key for your thing so that it is you, you don't make it tidy. So basically, that's it. I wish you the best. I will see you next year in grade 11. Ne? See you again. M. Saidi, as usual, see you again. Uh, welcome back to our class. Today, we are going to be talking about a prediction for grade 10 for their final exam, paper two. Uh, many people have been asking me that why don't you do a prediction for this grade? As I promised that I'll come back for the full prediction, uh, let's start by discussing 